Hello, Bobcats and all the other OCPS teachers out there and teachers across the globe. I want to address some confusions that still seem to be coming up with Big Blue Button. So for the OCPS implementation, we have two ways to create a Big Blue Button conference. The first, and what I typically will recommend, is that you create it through your Canvas course using the conferences option. So you do that as you've seen in my other video by going into your actual course and clicking conferences. Here's the reason why. When you do it through Canvas, it will send that link and that information directly to your students through the Conferences tab. Once you start a conference or have finished conferences, they'll be able to see it there. This will also mean that only the students in your Canvas course can access the conference that or the parents as well. That will prevent random people from getting in. It requires that they use their real names instead of being able to create fake names and it will always make sure that you are able to track who has done and said what in the conference by their real name. So in most cases I would recommend that you use conferences through Canvas. Now in some cases you might not be able to do that. For example, if you want to do a session for all of your students, but you have your standard and your advanced classes separated on Canvas. If you cross-list at this point, you'll lose all the previous work, so you don't want to do that if you've been using Canvas all year, but you also want to be able to do one session for all of them to have access to. Then in that case, you will launch Big Blue Button through Launchpad. You'll click the icon in Launchpad, and that will bring you here. Once you sign in, you'll be able to create a room. That room generates the link that people talk about with Big Blue Button. So if you're creating a session that will include students from multiple courses in Canvas, or if you're an admin or a team working together to build sessions, you'll do that through here. One of the things that I think is really important to understand, and what a lot of people seem to be missing, are some of the settings you have available when you create a room. So by default, you'll have this home room option but you can also click create a room to make a new room. You can give it a name, you can give it an access code. I would always say you want to mute users when they join because you don't want them right away and you don't want any user to start this session. You don't want them all to join as moderators. Don't do those two things. One thing that might be worth considering and this is a really good idea, a requiring moderator approval before joining the room. We're starting to get reports of students coming in or people coming into rooms and using fake names, making inappropriate comments. To prevent that, require moderator approval before joining and simply say, you must use your real name to enter this room. First and last would be what I would recommend. As a best practice, what I would probably do, because once you start teaching, once you're really running a live session, you're not going to have time to be able to moderate students as you go along. What I would recommend as a best practice is pick a student who is reliable and you know you can trust and have them become a moderator on the class. So while you're presenting, they're able to use the moderation tool to be able to approve students that are in the, into the chat. I just want to make that available to everybody and make you understand that there is a difference between those two things. If you create it through launch, then you will have that link that you can send out to people. If you create it through Canvas, it will only be to people who are enrolled in that course or to the parent accounts that are observers on that course. And if you're having issues or you're concerned about student comments and people saying things they shouldn't on a chat, then I would require moderator approval before joining the room. I hope that clears up some issues you might be having, and as always, if you have any additional questions or comments, please feel free to email me, bradley.streffler at ocps.net. I'll be glad to answer any of your questions there, and I hope everybody has a great day.